Dundee Street. You, would you believe that? Take it all right. Aye, can I get a large tea, please? Uh, can I get three milks, please? Cheers. Voith, wow, what? Oh my. <laughs> I can't believe it. I, I, this honestly is truly a constant. Voith transmissions. Oh. <laughs> From there you could see Gemma Clarkson's house. In my 1400 mile England excursion series, I set off from my home Scottish city of Dundee to England's Barrow and Furnace, then to the famous YouTuber Mendit Mark of Perton Electronics in Wolverhampton. Then I visit London's Kenningston, Tottenham, Westminster, Croydon and Brixton, including the famous Electric Avenue areas of London. After London, I then travelled to Germany Clarkson's Diddley Squat Farm and the local areas. After that, I returned back to Barrow and Furnace to visit more of Barrow. I hope you enjoy my series and thank you for selecting. In this episode, I visit London's Croydon areas. Hey, hello all. So it's uh, the third day in London. Uh, we're three whole days here. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. And this is the Thursday. So tomorrow I set off from London up to Barrow and Furness and I'm going to stop off at Diddley Squat Farm. That's tomorrow's plan. This is all part of my uh, England English excursion from my holiday. So I'm just on route to uh, Croydon, so I just stopped here for a moment just to set the camera up, show you a wee bit of the roads. Now I've no idea of any of this area of London. And Turn pure, left, 823, Pearly Way. It's all, uh, it's all new to me, like. So, uh, Traffic here is pretty bad. Well, not here, but in London it's just busier than I'm used to, like, yeah. Oh, come on. Right, so we're on the move. So I'm heading for, uh, Purley, Purley, Purley Way. Well, that's actually what I know. I'm heading for the centre of Croydon. That was good yesterday. Uh, I took the train in C2 C2 C train from Chartford 100 to Fenchurch Street Station. That was good. For so today, I have a look at Croydon. Ooh, there, I'll maybe here look at the. I might go and here look at Brixton. Uh, I'll see, I'll see what happens, I'll see how I feel. I do a lot of uh, cramming as much as I can in the, the three days. <laughs> it's got a nice feel there. All I've been doing is just sort of fulfilling these three days from the minute I get up to the minute I get back to the room. So I'll leave the hotel room, the travel lodge at Thurrock on the M25. I'll leave feeling refreshed and I come back feeling exhausted. Just because I've been cram packing everything. We've only got three whole days in London for my part of my excursion. So I'm just making the absolute most of it. Yeah. Ah, bloody lights. Yeah, I made that. So, I'm not video all the for too long. I'll just get some of the streets for you just to give you an idea of what it's like. I think I've been here before, of course. If you're interested to see where I've uh, visited, the bits that I've driven through and the bits that I'm going to have a look at, then that's what I've put the video up for for anybody who wants to see it. So, the other, <coughs> the other day, the Monday, was it? No, the Tuesday. The Tuesday was I drove for the Thurrock Hotel, Thurrock Services on the M25 Travel Lodge Hotel. I drove from there to Kenningston. And that is going through the built up like the, near the peripheral of the central area, just on the border of the congestion charge zone. 
and it was just like horrendous for traffic. It was just stop, start, stop, start. Oh God, it, was, it took me an hour and a half. So, it wasn't a very good. But yesterday was fine uh, with the train like that. See some interest in architecture and that around about the area. I just want to hear a look around the schemes that I've not been to before. I've certainly not driven them before, like so. I went over, oh that reminds me, I went to pay the Dartford crossing, which was, uh, it was 2 50 for the toll charge for that. So I had to pay that before midnight tonight. Uh, so, I'll pay it by phone or online, I'll put it online. This is where it gets really congested though, because I'm getting nearer the central, central areas. The car doesn't like this because it pings when it, you know, it's sitting there like a lot. Stop, start, it's not good for economy. I don't like congestion either. Three quarters of a mile away from the centre of the crowd, I just putting crowd on the sat nav. So I'm going to have a look around. I've never been, so I'm going to have a look around. Like, oh. So when I get there, I'll get out, have a walk around and that. Um, just like what I did when I was at the. Um, Tottenham, Gennison, do the same sort of thing. I'll have to check my line for the Dartford crossing. If you pay once, does that include all day or is it per crossing? Because the congestion charge, I think, is you pay once and it's lasts you all day. So I think it's just like a bridge stone. 250 for the crossing, so it'll probably be per crossing, pay per crossing. So it'll be 250 for a car anyway. That way, I'm just falling the road round. So, are there lanes? It's sort of merging the one in every hill, kind of. Like that, for example. You know what I mean? Versus in the wood. Edinburgh's bad for that. We'll get into the inside of blooming traffic most of them. I don't know how the cab drivers can do it. How do they remember where to go? And how do they deal with the traffic? I mean, I drive buses in Dundee, but jeez, I'd hate to think about driving buses here. Like, <laughs> how did I mean, the buses never. The one that was supposed to turn up, the 148. Going for the elephant, 
Castle to uh, to Westminster. I didn't show up. I, I just didn't show up. I was waiting for ages. Now, not blaming the drivers, not having to go at them by no means. It's just the, the traffic situation. Just that's all. I'm not blaming the drivers are not having to go. I never said nothing. To them. But I ended up just walking. Uh, I looked on BusTimes.org and it looked like there was nothing there. People were. I heard, I heard people in the queue wondering as well, like you know, tourists and that, because I could overhear them. And they were saying, "Oh, I'll be there in a minute." And then I, I was checking the online while that was going on. The BusTimes.org. After 800 yards, so turn left, I'm just going to walk. Yeah. So, uh, uh, it's a bit of a retail park. Maybe I should be parking in there, eh? After 400 yards, turn left, Beddington Farm Road. This is the centre of Croydon. Turn there. left. There's two big chimneys up ahead. I wonder what, what that is. This, the purely way centres on the right. Probably just parked in here, right? I mean, it's just around the corner. I don't know why I need to go this way. No, I can't walk. Bugger it. I'm just parking. I don't hate to go that way. That's just because I put it in the sat now, but it's just. Uh, oh, no, I'll just park in here. Just for the. Could maybe go to the Sainsbury's. What's this furniture village? Turn right, then make a U turn. Uh, I can maybe go over to the Sainsbury's there, eh? I'll maybe do that instead. Park over there. I mean, I could probably park here. I don't see it would be a problem. Like, you know, okay, not really. Make sure you yeah. turn, then you have reached your destination. Right it is on your left. Place. You have reached your destination. It is on your left. Ah, well, I'm maybe going there. I'm not kind of going to get a right turn out of here very easily. I'll maybe, as I say, I'll maybe park over there. No chance. I'm not going to get a right turn out of here. I'll wait, probably just turn right into one of the streets and just go in that way because there's no way I'm going to get it. four lanes of traffic, not a chance. So I'll, I'll get into the traffic, then I'll turn into a street which will uh, get me onto that side because it's just going to be a nightmare to turn right. Unless you could probably go right through or something. Uh, I don't know. Uh, if it's in the centre, eh? I was just really wanting to look at the centre. I'm just going here now. Voith, wow, what? Oh my. <laughs> Can I believe it? I, I, this honestly is truly a constant. Voith transmissions. Oh, <laughs> I didn't care that. Huh? Voith, because I'm interested in Voith gearboxes. That's what they have in the buses. <laughs> wow, I'd, I'll let him out <laughs> and in a good mood. That was a surprise. I'd, I'd, I'm going to get pictures of that. I definitely am. Like, I mean, I didn't expect that. I was sh honestly no idea where, it, where that was there. I was just coming here to have a look at Croydon and I just stumbled across that place. Voith Transmissions. <laughs> so I'm going to park up at Sainsbury's though because it's, um, I will be a customer there. I'll get something out of Sainsbury's and I'll be able to have a wee walk, walk down to the, the area as well. And then coming back this way to have a closer look at that Voith transmission place. I'll be getting pictures and logging that in as well, like definitely. I just, I just stumbled across that, I, I swear I, I, I swear to God, I, I didn't know that was there. If I'd known, I'd have planned that for sure. 
but it's, I don't know again, as a derivative of it, it'll be like uh, one of the voice branches, but they do transmissions and then into bus transmissions, I like knowing how they work and uh, if we could get a tour, then that would be absolutely excellent. Uh, just even being there. Um, I know that Voice do other products like turbines and stuff like that, but in, they are uh, the transmissions were in my favourite type of bus, the Volvo Elsa. The Mark III engines were coupled up to the Voith transmission in the uh, Elsa's. Voith's been in a lot of bus manufacturers, but that was in the model of bus that got me into buses back in 1987 when I was 12. They had, uh, well, the they had Mark III engines in them with the Voith transmission. I'll certainly say that. And, oh, excuse me. I'd be interested in how they work. <laughs> I didn't know that that did a bit of was there. So I'll be getting some pictures. So what I had to do is get out of that, the Parley Way Centre, where the Sainsbury's is. You get parked there. It's TK Maxx. In fact, there's a big bit of a retail part there, so I might even be able to get like, a coffee as well. Uh, oh, come on, look at the stuff here. Bloody lights. Yeah, I'll just go in here. And it's a far way. Well, I'll get parked in here. Brilliant. Uh, we'll go and get a. Uh... Because <laughs> you're allowed so long in these uh, retail parts, you know, customers, which will be. Uh, we'll give us the opportunity to have a wee look around because, as I say, just having a brief look at the area, but I'm definitely going over to that Voith area, that Voith factory, because I'm, I'm interested in the products they were in the buses and it's part of the transmissions and the buses we've got Enviro 400 MMC's uh, smart line, the Dundee ones, I mean they're in lots of other buses as well the other buses we've come to what we've got Voith transmissions in them as well uh, the Voith transmission is in oh, they've been in the Volvo B10 M City buses we, there's three of ours that had them, the 687, 88 they were the Volvo B10M Mark II's with East Lanks body works, they had Voith, four speeds transmissions. Then we had a batch of Volvo B10Ls um, that had Volvo, uh, Volvo B10L, Volvo B10L single deckers with the right body work that had three speed Voith transmissions in them as well. So I'm going to get myself over there. 16 minutes, well that's been a bit longer than I thought. Oh. <laughs> Where did they put the whole car park? Where did they put the park right next to you? Never mind. Um, so, anyway, let's get out and uh, have a look. Let's go first thing and then let's have a look over there. Um, and then I'll maybe hear a walk down over there somewhere. I'll just have a quick look around. Then I'll go into some of the built up areas, the, the houses and that, and have a look at them. Um, right, let's go on with it then. So, Set of crater in there, just we have a look at these chimneys later on as well. First, it's over that voice, that voice factory. Selfie with that there. Try and get that this camera set. So I could do that at the same time. I didn't get the name in. Now, what I'll do is different. So, I'm going to get a good ask, I suppose, and see if we can have a look. Get to have a look. I didn't care if there'll be a lot of film for our light, though. But I can only just go in and ask if we could at least see it for myself. We could get a tour around. Uh, 
I've looked blind normally, I just stumbled across it. I'll just uh, go to ask it. And, and if I could get footage online, then, that, then so be it. I'll be able to do that and show you so if you're interested. But, uh, This will be one of the branches, it's a German company, like Moy, well, big company, an international company. So there are obviously uh, there'll be around about branches out of the UK I suppose. And I just happened to come across this one today. Just because I wanted to turn to get turned, because it's easier. So the light comes away. So yeah. So, um, I think this is as far as it stretches. Uh, I've got an idea how big the factory is if I walk something around the peripheral just a bit. Um, that might just be the, the I don't know if it's, if it's administration or what. Um, I hope to see some technical stuff like the insides of the gearboxes and stuff. Yeah. I'm going to wait in and ask him anyway. I'll have to put the camera off for that because I kind of just assume I can fill up, so I'll have to check with them first. I'll let you know how we got on. Right, so <coughs> I tried going in the. I had to. I tried the reception, there was nobody there, and I uh, walked in there with one of the workers there. They says, go down there and ask for the stores went, so I went down. But the, I've got to book it in, you know, go through the channels, book it in through the, um, through the reception. The, the, the woman that's working the days and the inch is off today, so I have to. They gave us a number, like, you know, to phone back the guy that, that I spoke to, and he says, uh, you know, arrange it through the, just the channels, because I haven't been booked in as a visitor, so I wouldn't really be allowed to go into the factory to have a look, you know. Uh, he said it'd be better to book it in and I'd be able to get a proper look, you know. Uh, but it's because I go back home tomorrow, it'd have to be done in a another occasion, <laughs> it's a long way to come, but at least I know that it's there for future, uh, for, for future knowledge, I know how to, well, I've been here, I've been in the Voith Voy and Croydon, so, but I was a bit of a long shot, I mean, I just literally walked in and was asking if I could have a wee tour around and do a video, but I've got to do it through the channel, so, fair enough, um, I don't know if it'd be a lot to put it on YouTube, but I'd have to ask that as well, like, but, I want to get in there for, you know, to have a look myself and then if I can it'd be a bonus to be able to put it on uh, the, the YouTube but it stretches right down it's all bits and pieces just on the pallets and that you know uh, big industrial bits of components uh, they do transmissions but they do other things as well like turbines and stuff like that so anyway that was a pleasant surprise so I'm going to have a look around in the centre of uh, Croydon now. Well, part and in the centre of Croydon. But I'm going to have a look around on foot. I'm going to maybe have a look at these uh, two chimneys and see what's going on there like. Uh, see what that's about. chimneys <laughs> I know somebody that would be happy to be here Ikea <laughs> it's a big Ikea at Croydon and these towers by the way are known as the Ikea towers and they're used as landmarks they were once part of the, it was something to do with a power station or something way back in the 18th century. So they're, all, they're just known as the IKEA Towers. So, 
That reminds me of the Cox's stack in Dundee. It's a bit of a landmark. They're used for, uh, you know, just as an unofficially used as a landmark. People use it to, according to what the recess have done, very little, just while I've stood here, so just good old up. Uh, yeah, I know somebody that will really happy. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll get you here. Get a chip in for the petrol. <laughs> That's a long way to come for right here. Right, I'll go and show you these towers closer. <laughs> Moving on. To other things because time's limited. So let's see what else there is to have a look at. to Elmer's End. Just any wheelie ground, the, some of the built up areas, just visiting, see what it looks like. The design of the buildings, the streets, just having a look at the the way the place is um, designed and that. Uh, interested to learn how in different schemes, different places, um, visit them and just have a look at the way. The road layouts are, uh, you know, the lamp posts, the signs, everything, just to get a feel for places that uh, see what the shops are like. And, uh, just genuinely having a look around um, to learn what the pavements are like to walk on, what the roads are like to drive on, what the trees, what, if the whole the surrounding areas, just learning and seeing what it's like. That's what you travel for. So, so I'll just make a way back to the bit part. Um, see what else there is to have a look at. Just exploring, exploring around. What you travel for if you're wanting to travel to places you haven't been to before and you want to see what these places are like. To experience being there, you travel to them and you just I relish the experience of being somewhere you haven't, you haven't been before. I haven't been here before, so I'm just learning the areas and just looking around. I can say I've been here before. I've always wondered about places I haven't been there before. This is what I'm doing, is just visit places that I've been there, share my experience with you.
yes, as a customer. Right, so I'm back in the car. Uh, I went and got some groceries. I'm gonna have a, oh, I don't know, that was upside down with the galaxy. Salted caramel, mm, delicious. Uh, some grapes. <laughs> And I'll be done of this and then I'll have a wee think where I'm going to go. Probably got a Brixton. I might have a wee look around the other bits of crime and I'll have to decide now uh, what I'm going to do. Um, and I'll keep you posted. So, I think I'm going to have a wee refreshment and then uh, decide what I'm going to do next. Right, so I've had a wee refreshment. Um, I'm going to go into the, right into the centre of Croydon, it's about a mile away. And I'll have a wee look there before I set off for uh, probably Brixton, I think, after this. But I'm going to make, uh, make my way to the centre of, uh, well, this is the centre, but, um, what is it called? Ghibli Car Park, Ghibli Bridge Car Park. I'm going to get myself there, which is pretty much bang on in the centre. Okay. I've moved on a wee bit from the, well, I've... And just yards away from the car park that I've set the sat nav for the Jubilee Bridge car park, and there's just going to drive in some of these streets of uh, Croydon just to show you. So I'll put the dash cam, well, the camera on the uh, stand there. By the way, that Voith place it's the only main one in Britain, so that was a great discovery that I stumbled across it. So I'm really chuffed to that. I even phoned the work, the mechanics, and because uh, they know me in the bus spot, I have have been, I spoke to the car that knew me for, since I was a kid in the 80s, I used to go down to the garage. Uh, and I was down about the Voith Croydon the patch there, right and that was the one where they trained in that as well. So, quite chuffed with that. Anyway, uh, I'll set this thing around and I'll show you the streets uh, of um, Croydon. Well, this part of Croydon. And it just shows you the architecture, the lamp posts, the telegraph poles, the roads, the, the way, just the whole area. The, what it looks like, the design of the area as well. So, so I haven't actually been to the car park yet. I just took a turning off because I looked at the, the schemes here and I just wanted to have a drive in. The roads are a bit narrow, as you can tell. It's a bit heavily congested with uh, parked cars, narrowness of the roads. But that gives you an idea what it's like driving around some of the streets. Uh, how the, you know how tight the roads are. After seventy hard. yards, turn right, Sins Road. So I'm actually deliberately going to right. and deliberately going to go against what the sat nav's telling me because I want to go around this area. I'll end up back, so I'll just reprogram the route back to the uh, car park. But I'm just going to have a wee sort of barrel around here. So I'm just going to kind of skip what the sat nav's saying for now. Oh, and I'm going to drive around just just this wee bit. Let's, I don't know what the a bit of a hold up. Uh, so, well, there's something that's stuck, I don't know what's happening. So, um, nah, so that's typical. I uh, start recording, and then there's a traffic hold up or a jam or something. I don't know what's what's actually going on. Uh, is that a breakdown? Maybe it's that. Uh, Learner one broke down or something, I don't know. No, it's reversing. Right? Well, I'll let him reverse. So, well, obviously not. Right, yeah, it's reversing. Right, okay. So, um, I'm assuming I, I'm hoping I could get right down this road and then I'm going to go left round the schemes and that. Uh, So it's sort of the brick, the brickwork in that. You get, you get the turn right, Sidden's Road. Then the take the second ah, right. Damn it! That is a dead end. Sugar. We're gonna have to go down that way. I didn't even say that this road was a dead end, by the way, when I drove down it. There was no sign saying no uh, dead end. It just well, actually, it isn't really a dead end because it comes out here. So. But that bit there was a dead end, but you would be able to see that anyway, so it doesn't really need to have a... Well, you would be able to see it normally if it was, you know, but... But, uh, I'll start another file, actually.
Oh, I was stopped when I did that, when I pressed that recorder. Um, yeah, I was just doing another file so I could keep the video at a, at a reasonable length. I don't want to record stuff, it's just going to make the video too long, so... Oh, there's an old seer up there. Wow. <laughs> oh, come on, Tim. It's a dead end. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. I'll go around and show you that Sierra then. <sighs> Shows in from down here, does it? No. <laughs> I just didn't want to be showing the camera right into the guy's house there because it was doing a U-turn at a three-point turn. I didn't want to invade his privacy, so I just paused the video there momentarily because you'd just be looking right up the driveway. I was in, not intending on doing that. There's an old Sierra. That's an old car, an old Gear Edge. You don't see many of them about. It's a Sierra Sapphire. Wow. Grief, that's a, a rare thing. It used to be common as any. Yeah. I remember when the Sierra came out in 1983. At the end of the road, turn Ford left. Cortina. Vicarage Road, then <clears throat> at the end of the road, so, turn uh, left. Yeah, that place to Ford Cortina. The Sierra, turn left, the then at the end of the road, turn actually, left. Uh, so I'm not going to go down there again because it's just basically not much to see. Well, I've been round it anyway, so I'm going to have a wee. Turn left, Watton Road. Uh, I'll, look up, I'll go left and right. I'll go, I'll go left and down there. So I'll have a wee... I'll have a drive down here. No, uh, that is a dead end, so it does warn you that the signs... that the road's a dead end. Benson Road, then on. So I'm just... going to have a... see what it looks like down here. You can see the designs of the buildings and that, the way that the, the, you see the telegraph yards, and its lamp turn posts around when the, possible. You get, this is what it's like here. It's a place I've never been to before. So, it's got like a barrier at the end there. Look, it's quite near. See, it's got two barriers. There's in there and there's, there's in here Courtney Road and Liddick Park. So, I don't know why it's like that, why they've got them there. Just the way they seem to do it here. I don't Turn know why left, they, Benson Road. Why it's like that, but Right, I'm gonna to go to the actual car park now. I'm gonna to listen to the instructions from the sat nav and I'm gonna get myself there. I was just to do a bit of a sort of drive through these areas. So it saves us having to walk through here. So it's quicker just to drive through and record it on the camera phone and uh, see it, what it's like. After 100 yards, turn right, Wadden Road, then, at the end of the road, turn left. Just a um, thing of parking as well, it's just, it's so, uh, timed. Turn right, then, at the end of the road, parking turn left. In display, and a, a lot of it is permit as well, permit parking. So, it's, uh, what's the time, it's just 10 to, f 10 to 5, so in kind of like, I watch for cyclists like that, you know, they're going your outside and you're turning right and they're going your outside. But, uh, yeah, so it's 10 to 5, so I'm kind of like beginning to think about peak time traffic. But then London's peak time traffic anyway. So, that's obviously the way to get through the traffic, you just zip down on the bike there, on the moped. And that's why a lot of them will do it, I get them wrong. At the, the end of the road, turn left, Wadden New Road, then cross the roundabout and take the first exit. So turn could, left, um, then cross the roundabout and take the first exit. I was actually going to go, in, instead of following the sat-nav, I'm going to go straight on and allow to. I'm going to have a look down there in the car, save time. So I could go straight on, there's nothing to say. It says unshootable for its GB, so 7.5 ton, no 7.5 ton. So I know I like to go down there, so I'm going to go, I'm going to drive down there, uh, have a wee, have a look at the, the streets and that down there. That bus is turning right, that's uh, Dennis Dart, is it? And the airline viral 200, I think that was, it's a later Dennis Dart. 
prior to that thing. Certainly in that family, anyway, it's the minibus. So, um, Arriva is this sector of buses, it's the London buses Arriva Group. That's an Enviro 400, it's one of the, late, the early ones, earlier ones. Alexander Dennis. Hey, it's so alright, I could get some parking there. Oh, I could get up there as well. It'd be interesting to have a look up there. Uh, actually, I'm going to do that. I'm going to turn. No, I'm going to go along a bit. Let's see then. Right, uh, I'll go along a bit, then I'll go up there. We'll go up there in a minute. I'll go to here, look around here, then I'll burrow into here, look up there. Oh, look at that building. Wow. <laughs> oh. Ah, this is a, no, this is all dead ends except it's a dead end for cars. So really, there's no much point in going up any. Well, well, we'll go up further and get turned there. So again, it's metered to parking. Uh, I'll go right up then. Why not? I'll just turn right at this top. So I don't know how to make the video. Although it's interesting because it's actually moving, so... Oh, look at that type of building. That's, I like the high at the... The, um, tower buildings, you know, the blocks of flats and that. I'm quite interested in, uh, looking at that. So we've got the... The old town youth club, just on... To the left there. So cyclists... I'd probably like to have a wee look, a closer look at that. Uh, oh, so I better know about if this was in time. Then again, I could. No, no I'm just going to. If I get out and park it, then. You've seen it anyway, that's. You saw all there is to see, really. I was thinking of getting out and having a walk around, but. I just want to uh, cover as much as I can in the time that I've got. The quickest way is to drive around with the camera on and then I could record the footage while I'm driving about. So I'm on Wadden Road and I went to turn left up to, you know, where's that pedestrian? And no motor vehicles, Monday to Friday, 8 to 9.30am. After 80 yards, turn right, Wadden Road, then cross the roundabout and take the first exit, Wadden New Road. If it doesn't, if, it, if it's a sign saying no motor vehicles and restrictions, the roundabout if and I don't get a chance to do that, I'll just exit. assume I'll, I'll just no drive it until I, I'll just assume that I can't do it, until we get a proper look at it. I'm not going to get zapped on the cameras, because there's cameras everywhere in London, by the way, that recognise your number plate. But what I'll do is I'll turn right you. Um, so I'm going to go right, get to that car park. Yeah, so if you're driving about in a car, your, num your number plate will get flashed up with the cameras, will recognise your uh, plate. I'll run it through the system for everything to make sure your car's A. Oh Christ, I forgot that Dartford thing, what you pay that? <sighs> forgot. But yeah, to make sure your car's A, it's up to the emissions standard for the US ultra low emissions zones. That'll clock your speed. Speed cameras work here. Well, it certainly seem like they would anyway, but the road markings are maintained for it. Uh, the cars and that seem to slow down for it, so I believe they work. I don't want to be the find it the hard way, so uh, the cameras will also check for the congestion zones that you're paying your way. So there's cameras everywhere that'll check your car out. So if there's any restrictions and stuff, uh, if there's any restrictions in that, you better just adhere to them because camera will clock your number. So I wasn't sure about going up that road, it had no motor vehicles, it had times and everything below it. So I'm just not going to uh, exit, take the chance, because if it's up with the times and I get zapped, well, I'm not meant to be there, unless it's a perma open or something, I'll well, probably get a fine or whatever, so I'm not prepared to risk it. So I've indulged just to avoid it all together. If I get a chance to have a problem with the times, and take the first anyway. exit. There's no necessity to there anyway, so... Ah, I drove in there, didn't I? 
No, no, actually, yeah, I did it right down there. Yeah. After so 100 yards, right. turn right, lower Church Street, then you have reached your destination. Jubilee Bridge, car park, I think it's called. Turn right, then you have reached oh, your shit. destination. Ah, oh, Jubilee Bridge, car park, just there on the right. So I don't know what I spent too long here. I'm going to park legitimately. I'll have you walk up under that bridge to the shopping bit, shop centre up there. And how do you get in this bloody car park now? Ah, damn. Is it up there, is it? You have reached your destination, Booth Road. Ah, that's it there. Oh, what's this barrier? Oh, fuck off. Salvation Army private car park, permit holders only. Great. By the way, park on there. There is spaces on the street anyway, so I'll just park there. I'll pay the uh, pay the display or whatever it is. I was kind of hoping to get in that one there because it looked good on the map, but it didn't say it was a private one for the Salvation Army. So it's obviously nice to me, but there is spaces available on the street, so I'll uh, park there. Oh, we're going to walk under that uh, Jubilee Bridge. Oh, wait a minute now, hang on a second. Hang on a minute. So, the Jubilee Bridge car park. Oh, hang on, no, that's, that's, that's it there. That's the car park there, is it? Ah, that's just the uh, celebration. This is the Jubilee Bridge car park. What was the tariffs, by the way? 2.30 for one hour, right? Oh, I'm not going to be that long. I don't, it'll probably be cheaper the longer you stay, but there's the tariffs. Two hours, four sixty, three four. That's bloody dear, actually. Four pound nine twenty. Well, I'll stick a two thirty on. I'll be less than an hour, but uh, that just keeps me right. I'm not going to get a ticket or anything because if you, you know, the, the wardens will probably be about, and you get a fine, and I don't want all that nonsense. So I just pay the two thirty and get parked properly. Save the hassle. Um, so in it, there's uh, the Jubilee Bridge car park at Croydon and I'm going to have a wee walk up towards the uh, that sort of high street area that I just clocked there um, I'll get out on foot and have a better look Right, so I better get so I'll get that Dartford thing paid as well I'm going to forget I've got till midnight tonight, it's so easy to forget that, you know, because we're sidetracked. When I saw that voice factory, I was kind of like, oh, amazed, and I kind of forgot about the Dartford. <laughs> right, let's switch that up, windows off, and make sure our valuables are at the site. So I'm going to get a ticket, parking ticket for an hour, for 2.30 here. Um, I'm going to have you wander up, the, it'll be the Croydon High Street, I guess, so the main central shopping area. That part of it anyway. Some interesting buildings there as well. I might have to look at. Right, I'll let you know how we get on. So this is the old town of Croydon. Types of buses and up here, up to Solo, or is that up to Excel? Uh, Alexander and Viral Dennis, probably a hybrid up there, and the uh, Viral 200 just went past on the other side. So I'm going to have a good look up that street there.
So, I'm just walking along uh, Church Street in Croydon, Old Croydon. Trams run right through the centre as well. Surrey Street Market. It's been a market since 12th century or something, 1226 I think it was. Yeah. A lot of um, fish markets, uh, food markets and that as well. Uh, Sure. Well, here we probably I'll go down there and go right, have a look up there, and then I'll head back to the car. I'm limited for time, so I'll just um, start heading back to another. <laughs> In Mr. Fox's Steakhouse. It's past that there on the right.
So I head along here for a bit before I go back to the car. I'll be like in this sort of high street area. Just as a tip, so you don't get lost and forget where you parked, it's always a good idea to make note and maybe even take a picture as to where you're parked because you could easily get lost and forget, you know. Um, so it's always a good tip if you're ever going to a place and you park and you go wandering around and you may forget your way back or where you parked. So just be, uh, be, be careful you don't do that. Just make a note of a mental note and even write it down, even photograph the street and where you left it and everything so you know how to get back. In fact, you could even go to Google Maps when you're there, screen save your pinpoint location where you are so you have a reference to get uh, to go and to find your way back should you forget. Should you need to grab wandered a bit, quite a bit from the car now. So I know how to get back, like, but sometimes you sort of cross my mind and say, where did I park again? <laughs> I was not marking the video right enough, but if you're not doing that, then it's always a good idea to uh, do that. It's quite an unusual looking telephone booth. Right, I'm going to have to start making my way back because uh, I've walked for quite a distance. I obviously need to have a lot of time to get back. So it stretches quite a considerable bit down there. But I'm not going to wait down there. I'm going to uh, start heading back to the, the car the way I came. No. Right, I'll let you know how I get on. Uh, Croydon, by the way, it's kind of like in the inner south part of London. It's almost like a town within the city. It's that big, you know. It's got its own high street. Uh, it's just like a city, a, a small city within a large city, <laughs> and a town within a, a city. So that's just nearly back to one part. I'm going away to have a look, look at other parts of London. Right, so this is back to the car. I wasn't wanting to shout where I was going, broadcast out in the street, just what the plans are like, yeah, yeah, just keep that in here. So I'm planning on going to Brixton next. Um, so I'll see what, see how it goes. It's getting, it's getting on a bit. It'll be getting dark soon, but I'll just only be able to have a look around in, in the dark when I get there. So that's it. I'll just have to see what I can see. Um, it's been a wee while here, a bit longer. You can never really plan how long I'm going to be. I just, you know, I just want to go a little bit further and a bit further and just keep walking down and there's just so much to see, you know. Uh, so, I think I'll make tracks to go to uh, Brixton and have a, wee, have a wee look there.
Okay. Actually, on route to just on leaving Brixton, uh, Brixton, on leaving Croydon, and then uh, kind of I think it's the west area of Croydon, and the architect architecture looks quite interesting over there. So I'm just going to have a wee drive around there and possibly get out as well. I have to be extra careful though. Uh, just you know, I don't know the area. I don't know. You know, I'll be coming to watch. Um, make sure all the valuables are away. I mean, I don't know this area, so. Right, I'll go and fix the camera up. So I'm just going to have a wee look here on route. Well, I'm going to visit this area, just see what this is like. Uh, the architectures and that, I'll look at the buildings and see what the... Kind of, I've got interest now, it's got a... Uh, ah, so it's one of the barrier things. So I don't know if I could drive through that, so probably have to just get out and walk. But I could drive through around some of the areas. Uh, like you see, I have no idea what way I'm going. Oh, well, I wasn't really intending on going down that way, but never mind, I'll say a turn. Ah, it's dead end anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, stay a turn here. I'll make sure it's. I'm not on a one way road when I'm doing that. Uh, I'll try to get the street name. What's that? And on Dead, Den Made Road. I'm just turning left on to. God, let me get the street name on. Trying to find the street name. I got the sat nav off, I switched the sat nav off because I had a programme for Brixton but this is kind of like done a detour. Actually what I'll do is I'll go right here and I'll come back down, that looks quite interesting. Okay, I don't think I could drive down that, but I could walk down, I could drive down this road but <coughs> I hope you can see the bulbs on the right. West Croydon or something. I'm sure. It's an outskirts of it anyway. Ah, oh, well, I think this is just. This is not where I was earlier, was it? Oh, I can take it, I can turn right here then. Oh, oh. Uh, once you've committed that set, you've got to go, well, you kind of change your mind, you've got to, uh, you know, I was sort of like thinking, oh, maybe you should have went up that way. And, uh, once that indicator's on and you've made that move, you've got to just finish it, you kind of just stop and go, you know, I've got to uh, go around and, um, Be extra, you know, driving a bit London, you get a lot of cyclists and that. Uh, you know, there's a lot more here than there are in other cities, but well, certainly in Dundee, anyway, there's a lot more. Than, you want to be very, very careful for them when you're doing manoeuvres like reversing or U turns because they're everywhere. They are everywhere. They're just, you know, there's loads of them. You know, mopeds, push bikes, uh, electric bikes, electric mopeds. Uh, it's just, What's this here? No, no motor, no motor vehicles except authorised vehicles. Fuck's sake. I must come down that way. Ah, oh, no motor vehicles, 200 yards ahead, right, okay. 
So that road I was wanting to go up, I couldn't have. Uh, I know I like to do that stupid grabs at head. So. Lights on. That's right, it's lights on. No, he's not. <laughs> oh, um, so I'm going to park somewhere, but before I do, that road is the service. When I go up, it's uh, that's about 200 years, so I can't get my car up there because I'm not authorised. So, oh, come on, this is it's just how they park cars. I can't get up the road because of the traffic coming down. <sighs> This is ridiculous. Ah, right, well, once you've gone, that's it. I'm through, so I've got no option but to keep going. Great, that's a police van there on the right. So I've seen a lot of police vans in that. I'm about to show too loud, I've got my window open. It's just because it gets warm. Actually, it's 14 degrees. A couple of days back, I was reading really about minus one at one, it was two and a half degrees, and everything. It was freezing. It's just that the park cars on the streets are so bottlenecked, you know. So, I could get up here, but I kind of go straight up because that's the no enemy for motor vehicles, except authorised. I was wanting to go up there in the car, but I'm going to hit uh, just park and walk up there if I want to go there. So what I'll do is I'm going to just turn it here. It's still in uh, Croydon, well this area on the outskirts of Croydon, by the way. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get myself parked about here. And then I'm going to go around on foot and have a look. So I'll get myself tucked in here at the, wood, at the road. Uh, I'll better check for the restrictions for the, the parking uh, tariffs and stuff. So. Right. Do it. Uh, well, then it's Nash, uh, National what's it, it's, like, it's Croydon Centre Pathway. So yeah, it's obviously still in the Croydon area. I'll keep that out the now, just for now. I've got all these valuables tucked out of all the way at the boot, uh, into the boot, out of sight. And I'll be on my wits, and I'll be, I'll try not to broadcast in the visitor, because I'm not from around here, and I don't know this area at all. But the, as I say, the buildings look interesting, and I like to visit areas like, areas I haven't been to before, and that's solely what I'm doing, uh, and just recording the videos and pictures to, uh, show you where I've went. Uh, I like to visit places that I haven't been. This, this being one of them. Um, this being one of them. So, uh, uh, right. right let's, let's get going. I'll get this tucked out of sight and then uh, see what happens. But, like I say, uh, I'll just have to. So I'm going to plan on going around that, that area. I look at these buildings there, and then I'll have a look up that street. I was wanting to go up there, and I wanted to go up the other one that I couldn't drive up, so I'll have a look up there, um, and then I'll start making my way to Brixton after that. I don't know in any bus, but it's going to be dark. So once it's dark, it's dark. So I'll just have to. It's not going to matter anymore. At least I've seen some bits of Croydon during the daylight. It's dusk now, so. Right enough, rabbit it on, let's get out there and explore.
Well, down this other street there, I was going to try and drive up to earlier, but this is... Uh, the, that access to the street was restricted, so I had to walk up. So clearly still in the Croydon, but just a different part of Croydon. So I'm not going to go much further. Like outdoor markets and that as well. Um, so that's right. So I'm going to get back to the car and head off to other bits of London. Alexander Dennis bodywork. Uh, quite a lot of Enviro's. That's a later Enviro 400 there, MMC bodywork. Probably on a Volvo B5 chassis, I think, the hybrids. Or is that the actual Dennis, Alexander Dennis? Some of them are Volvo B5s. I think that's uh, Volvo uh, Alexander Dennis uh, in the ground. This was the street that I couldn't drive up earlier on because it was, uh, yeah, it was this one here. I can see the sign. So I had to, so I had to uh, get out and walk. I'm not far from, just part from the corner. So I'll have to find somewhere for a quick toilet and then get heading, get heading to other bits of London. Uh, the area where I was uh, earlier on at Croydon, the bit that I was walking along the I thought it was a bit too far to walk to. I think that's this area here, so that's the end up there anyway. If it wasn't for the buildings down there, I probably wouldn't have uh, decided to visit this area. So, down the road. So, I'm going to head off to uh, uh, the Brixton area now, the Brixton area of London. 